just gonna wait for some people to arrive. Hang on. All right, I've got <laughs> I've got two viewers. <laughs> Hello, my two viewers. I've never done a live video, so this is going to be an experience for me. Does anybody want to ask a question? <laughs> Hello to my four viewers. I have no idea how this works, but that's okay. I'm gonna learn along the way. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I've got 80s music on, which is my favorite. <laughs> oh, hello, Charlie. My puppy just walked past. All right, I don't even know how this works. Does it just come up with Questions? Well, I may as well start by talking about my day. What did I do this morning? Got up, did a workout, had some breakfast, um, did some chores around the house, which is always fun. Had a lunch with some friends and it was a very long lunch, went for about six hours and now we're here. It's Saturday night in Sydney. Would anyone like to ask me a question? This work. Oh, look at my little hi Nick, hi Tom, hi Adam. doing something wrong that I can't see the questions. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> oh. Maybe I should. Oh, okay. How do I find, gosh. Why can't I see any of these? I don't know how to do this. How come I can't see the questions? Okay, I've got another phone here. Oh, people watching from Dubai, hello. Hello, Adam, sorry. I think that I didn't quite know how to do this, but I've got a second phone here now. I can read the questions. Am I Miss Earth? I'm not Miss Earth. I am Miss Universe Australia. Okay. Oh, thank you for my the love of the freckles. I'm sure my mum would say that she doesn't love them so much. She has freckles herself and um, used to always try and keep me out of the sun when I was little because she 
didn't want me to get any freckles on my skin, but I never listened. All right, what are my preparations before going to the pageant? Well, um, we definitely do things a little differently in Australia and we don't have pageant coaches or we don't really do formal pageant training. Um, I did meet up with someone the other day who is a pageant coach from the Philippines and he was telling me that the girls in the Philippines do a lot of preparation before they go away. So I had a few tips given to me by Pia who was Miss Universe 2015 and she just told me to watch all of the Miss Universes from the last four years and just kind of get an idea what it's going to be like. And I guess I've been keeping up with lots of all the news and practicing my walk. Um, I got myself a pair of those big heels from, I think it's from Chinese Laundry, and I've been practicing in them. And, um, you know, working on my poses and that sort of thing. And I guess all this sort of stuff helps me with my public speaking. All right, what have we got? Hello, hello, hello. What workout did I do? Today was legs and bums. Bum, I only have one bum, but <laughs> I was doing lots of stair runs, squats, jump squats, God, all of that. And my legs are like jelly now. So that's good. All right. Have I ever, Adam, what does that mean? Have I ever been this beautiful? <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure I've looked better than I do right now. Boyfriend or crown? That's a very good question. PR phase. That's a good one. I think I'd have to always choose love over the crown. However, if I could have both, that would be the best. I have so much love for the Philippines too. How do I prepare for the pageant? Well, the same thing as what I said before, just sort of making sure that my body's in the best shape it can be. So I'm trying at the moment to make sure I've got a nice like, definition and tone. I'm not trying to lose any weight currently, just trying to stay at the same weight I am and making sure that I'm eating really healthily so that my skin's glowing and that you know I don't get sick when I go away. Hello, Thailand. Hi, Toby Anderson. <laughs> Have I ever been to Thailand? I haven't been to Thailand and I am so excited to go. It's somewhere that Australians always travel to and it's probably one of the most popular destinations with Australians. Um, and I think there's a good reason for that and now I get to experience it. And I love the tropical kind of weather, I love the heat. My hair doesn't go frizzy, so I'm very lucky, and um, I love humidity. So I'm looking forward to it. And I love Thai food. Anyone that knows me knows that I love food more than anything, and Thai is one of my absolute favorites. A good Thai green curry, pad Thai, anything like that. Oh, I hope I'll be friends with Katriona as well. I hear her dad's from Cairns, which is in Queensland, so maybe I can bring out her Aussie accent. What have I got here? Ooh, who among the girls would you like to be your roommate? I, well, I know that I will probably be roomed with someone from an English-speaking country, so... God, out of all those girls, I couldn't be happy to move any of them. Um, I did have a message from Sarah Rose Summers the other day, and she was asking me if I snore and if I'm a early bird or a night owl. And I had to tell her that if we were roommates, I don't snore, which is good, but I do sleep with my eyes open occasionally. So whoever my roommate's going to be, I'm very sorry for that. Has becoming a beauty queen been part of my childhood dream? It's a good question. Look, growing up in Australia, I looked at our beauty queens, like, you know, Jen Hawkins, Jacinta Franklin, Rachel Finch, Renee Aris, 
you know, they're the typical Australian beauties, you know, they've got that Aussie look, a lot of them have got blonde hair, the blue eyes, tan skin, and growing up, I admired them, and I, I wanted to be a beauty queen, but I didn't think that I was the right fit for it. And I'm still in shock that I am actually the Miss Australia, because it's definitely a different look for Australia, um, but I really hope that by you know, representing a more multicultural country, that it can kind of inspire other kids growing up to think, oh, I can actually do that, because I definitely didn't think I could, and um, maybe if I did think I had a chance, I would have tried a lot earlier. Oh, Elliot Southwell, I have read two of your comments, now the third one. What is my advocacy campaign to do after getting Miss Universe crown? Well, I've got, I've got two. <laughs> they kind of work hand in hand. So obviously, one of my main advocacies is that I want everyone to kind of just embrace their difference or embrace what makes them unique. For me, it took me a long time to kind of be confident in being Eurasian, which sounds so ridiculous now, but definitely growing up in Australia, and I grew up in a very predominantly white area, I went to a school where I was the only sort of Asian kid. I always felt out of place, and I never really felt very Australian. And I used to hide away from that fact. I used to try and look more westernized, and I was really almost embarrassed by my Chinese heritage. And now I embrace with everything I have because for me, that Chinese heritage gives me my uniqueness. And so I wanna make sure that I'm encouraging every single person to just embrace what makes them different. Don't try and fit a mold because it's never gonna happen. You know, and I always wanna encourage young people to stop comparing themselves to other people because um, comparison is the thief of joy. That's a quote that I heard. The other advocacy that I have is that I want to break down the stigma of mental health. So while I've been Miss Universe and before that, I've been working closely with a few mental health organizations and I'm trying to break down that stigma by giving my own experience of mental health battles. So I did go through a stage where I was, you know, had really bad depression and anxiety and that was, I think, due to the fact that I always felt out of place and I wasn't confident. And so I think by telling my story and telling people that it's okay not to be okay, um, hopefully it can open up the dialogue and people can start talking about you know, how they're feeling. And I always think the first step to recovery is to actually talk to people about what you're going through. So they would be, you know, if I was crowned Miss Universe, and even if I'm not, it's still what I'm going to be promoting. Can you tell us more about yourself? Okay. I'm 24. I am from Sydney. I was born and bred in Sydney, which for anyone that knows Australia, that's where the Harbour Bridge is, where we've got the best beaches. Um, got a beautiful city and I actually live very close to the beach and that's been a big part of my childhood. I went to an all-girls school which was very interesting, very strict school and it was, school was very much based on academic success and not so much was placed on creativity. So once I left school I definitely felt more creative so I went and did an arts degree at Sydney University and that was a three-year degree and after that I still didn't really know what I wanted to do but I know that I love writing and creative writing is one of my passions so I decided to go into publishing and so I'm currently doing my masters in publishing at Sydney Uni and what I hope to do with that afterwards is probably go into the media industry I'm not sure that I'll go into publishing per se because when I started, magazines were still booming, and now in Australia, magazines are kind of taking a bit of a dip. So I'll definitely use what I've learnt in that course to continue my writing and maybe go into presenting, TV hosting, that sort of thing. 
What have I got here? Oh, thank you. So fresh and lovely. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> what is my mixed race? So my father is full Chinese and my mother is Irish Australian. So my mum has the flaming red hair, the freckles, the pale skin. She looks like she stepped right out of Dublin. And my dad, full Chinese, so his his mum came from Shanghai and my grandfather came from Guangdong province. What is my greatest fear of being in a pageant stage? So for me, public speaking has always been my greatest fear. I remember at school, I would cry before I had to give a speech. But I also didn't realize that our school always put so much emphasis on public speaking. So although I was scared, it prepared me. So it does freak me out a little bit, but at the end of the day, I kind of am prepared for it. And I know that I probably can answer most questions that are put my way. Um, Hopefully I just don't get word vomit and blah, blurt it all out. <laughs> what are my strengths and how can it help for my country? It's a good question. Look, I think for me one of my main strengths is that I'm very open and honest, um, which means that everything I you know, do and say is pretty transparent. I don't sugarcoat anything, so if I'm feeling a certain way or I'm thinking something, I will say it. Um, I won't ever try and be too politically correct and I think that's going to be a massive strength for me in this competition. Um, hopefully people like the truth. <laughs> Adam, has someone told you that you look like Nia Sanchez, Miss USA 2014? No, I haven't heard that before. I'll have to look her up. I hope she's pretty. <laughs> Hello, Francesca. I love that I have someone with my name in this competition. <laughs> I don't come across many Francescas in Australia, so it's very nice to have another Francesca on board. What was my inspiration to join the pageant? Um, for me, it was about breaking down those stereotypes. So. I wanted to go into the pageant because I wanted to show the changing face of Australia. I wanted to put forward, my, I put myself forward because I thought it's about time Australia showed our multiculturalism and showed a different side to Australia. We're not all blondes and blue eyed. <laughs> what do you think? What is your thought about body shaming? Mike Tan. I am very much against body shaming, um, I, but I come from an industry where body shaming is quite rife, so being in the modeling industry, you know, I had a lot of it, especially when I was a bit younger and I didn't handle it very well and I actually had to pull back and take myself out of the modeling industry for about two years until I was mature enough to understand that when someone, you know, is shaming you, it's more about them and not about you. And I've had to learn to just accept negativity um, and just kind of block it out. And at the end of the day, you do what feels right for you. If you feel healthy and fit, then that's great. And that's all that really matters. Um, anyone that has anything mean to say, I always say, keep it to yourself. Um, no one needs to hear that. If you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Oh, sunshine, thank you. <laughs> Casper, I know. You know what, people actually don't think that I am Eurasian. Um, I get Hawaiian a lot of the time. I have had Spanish before. Um, I think it's the freckles and my eyes aren't very typically Asiatic. Um, but I think if you saw pictures of me when I was younger, I had a much rounder face and I'm also wearing fake tan. So, you know, I think that sort of changes the Asian look about me. What's my favorite Chinese Australian food? It's a good question. I love yum cha and what else do I like? Um, 
dumplings are probably my favorite. I'm also a massive sweet tooth, so I love all of my little Asian desserts, all my red bean, you know, cakes or done tarts, all that sort of thing. Aussie food, I just like fresh, healthy things, so most nights I'll have a salad and meat or fish. Um, I'm pretty boring. <laughs> can you, how can you handle the Basha about transgender woman? Okay, I'm gonna have to guess. So, if this is the question about the transgender in Miss Universe competition, look, I'm all for it. I just think that if you identify as a woman and you are a woman, then this competition is for women. So, I don't really, I don't take an issue, I don't have an issue with it. Um, I actually applaud both Miss Mongolia and uh, Miss Spain because for them to get to where they are, they would have had to push through so much, I'm sure, negative commentary from the public and to be where they are now is truly inspiring and it shows a lot of character, strength of character. Adam, what can you say to critics who say that beauty pageants like Miss Universe commodify and objectify women to a certain stereotype? Yeah, look, I mean, even in Australia when people find out that I'm, you know, in this Miss Universe competition, they have a certain idea about what that means about somebody. But I think we're definitely changing that because if you look at all the girls that are in this competition, they come from all walks of life. I mean, you should just, you can tell by what they're doing, you know, they've got their career driven, all of them are doing amazing social work and things for the community or they're super intelligent or they're amazing athletes. They're just, they're, they're showing that a Miss Universe girl isn't just about beauty. It's definitely not just about beauty. Um, it's about, you know, intelligence and how they want to help people. I also think that Miss Universe, this competition gives so many women an amazing platform and I don't think people understand how amazing it is because these women now get to go out and promote what social issues are so important to them um, and they do an amazing job. Want to try Filipino foods? Absolutely. I can't tell you, I'm not really sure what a typical Filipino meal would look like, um, but I like everything, so I'm sure I'm gonna like it. You look like cross Katie Holmes and Nia Sanchez. Adam, you're gonna have to show me a picture of this Nia Sanchez. I suggest do not wear too much cosmetics and not too curly hairs. Okay, Caroline, thank you for that suggestion. I've actually had a lot of people message me and say not to wear too much makeup while I'm in the Miss Universe competition, and I actually agree. I look back at my winning crowning moment, and I was wearing a lot of makeup that night, and when I look back, I kind of almost don't recognize myself, and I definitely covered up a lot of my freckles, and at the end of the day, that's kind of who I am. And if I'm, you know, advocating to just sort of like be you and embrace your difference, then I kind of want to let my features shine. So I'm going to try and tone it back a little bit and go a little bit more a la naturale. But I also understand that when you're on stage with all that stage lighting, you still have to have a good amount of makeup on. Um, so you don't look washed out compared to the other beautiful girls up on that stage with you. What is the biggest issue in Australia at the moment? Well, that's a good one. We, we're not a perfect country by any means. Um, we are struggling a lot at the moment with, we're having a lot of um, drought issues. And for anyone overseas, Australia is, a lot of our economy is based on our agriculture. And our farmers, a lot of our income, you know, comes from our farmers. And at the moment in drought, a lot of our farmers are struggling. So a lot of work that, you know, charities are doing in Australia, and a lot of our charity work is going to helping those farmers feed their families because if they can't raise any livestock or they can't water their plants or their crops, they can't even, you know, put food on their tables. So that's a major issue they're having in Australia. Unfortunately, we don't have a solution at the moment because it is very much weather dependent. 
So we'll just have to pray to the water gods and hopefully it will rain soon in those areas. Angel White, I love your eyes, expressive. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I have. I sometimes watch videos back of myself, and I think I probably should stop moving my face so much. Um, I'm gonna get crow's feet. See, I'm already getting crow's feet because I, um, when I smile, I crinkle my eyes up a bit. Hi, Thailand. I love Australian people, so friendly. My most favorite place in Australia was in Canberra. Ah, that's interesting. So Canberra is our capital city. Um, I usually go there when I'm going to the snow because I like skiing. And yes, we do actually have ski fields in Australia, even though it's very hot here. Can you tell us about your journey to becoming a fashion model? How did you become an Instagram model? Thanks, Adam. So my journey to becoming a model wasn't easy. When I was at school, I had two best friends and they were both modeling and it's all I ever wanted. I really, I loved what they did and I wanted to do it so badly. So once I left school, I went and knocked on all the doors of the agencies in Sydney and I was turned away from every single one of them. Now this was about whoo, how many years ago now about five or six years ago now um, things were a little bit different I don't think we had as much diversity in the modeling industry in Australia um, but when I knocked on all those doors most people would tell me that I was too short or too fat or just not the right look which I completely understand at the end of the day that's their opinion so, but I wasn't going to let that get me down and I went off on my own and I started teeing up photo shoots with photographers. I even, you know, paid people that I thought, you know, were really amazing photographers and I got some work from them and I would just start posting on Instagram. And I started to build a bit of a following up on Instagram and eventually, you know, I had the courage to go back to a few agencies. And even after gaining a bit of a following on Instagram, I was still turned away from pretty much all of them, except for one, which was which is my agency now. And um, they took me in and they kind of helped me. They worked on, you know, I had to learn a bit more about the industry because I just sort of been going out on my own. And they taught me a lot. And um, I've been with them ever since and they're amazing. And um, yeah, I'm so grateful that they took me in because they've got me some really amazing clients and um, I've just had some of the best experiences in that industry. I definitely have grown as a person and um, it does teach you to have a very thick skin. Um, and I think now I can handle rejection very well. How do you choose what you post on your Instagram and what doesn't? You'd have 1,000 amazing pictures. How do you choose? Uh, I'm quite picky with what I put on my Instagram as well. I think that I don't like putting anything that is overtly sexual. Um, at the end of the day, that's not really my, my style. I'm a very happy person, and so a lot of my images I try to you know, show that. Um, I also try and show you know other aspects of my life like what I'm doing for my health and fitness and you know fashion hair and makeup <laughs> so not just you know model shot model shot model shot Mike Tam what can I say about Katriona Gray to be honest I don't know her at all but from what I've seen she is incredibly beautiful number one um, and two I've heard her speak and she just seems really passionate and um, very like very caring person, very sincere. Um, and I feel like we're gonna get along. Well, I hope so anyway. <laughs> Hello. What's from Thailand? Hello. What have? What else have I got here? You should have said Reggie, man. <laughs> Sorry, there's a lot. I'm trying to read through them all, guys. 
Do you think social media plays an important role in someone's candid candidacy, like yours going to Miss Universe? Look, I do think that social media plays quite an important role, but at the end of the day, I have learnt that a lot of people can put something forward on, on Instagram or social media um, that isn't really the truth. Um, I know that a lot of people can, you know, post a really beautiful picture and write a really beautiful caption, but in, at the end of the day, that might not actually be what they're thinking or feeling, and I think that you can learn a lot about somebody by actually meeting them face to face or interacting with them, which is why I actually think that the Miss Universe organization does it really well, <clears throat> sorry, by having the girls come, you know, at least two weeks before the main competition. I think it's really important for them to actually get a feel for the girls and to see them, you know, behind closed doors and not when it's always on public display. I think you can, you know, learn a lot about people, um, you know, when the makeup's, you know, been taken off and they're just, you know, living their normal everyday life or you see them, you know, in, at breakfast time and they might not have had enough sleep, you get a real good feel for somebody in those times and they're almost more important. You seem to be a well accomplished woman at such a young age. What has been your biggest accomplishment in life? I don't really, I don't know if I feel that accomplished. Um, there's a lot more that I'd like to accomplish. Um, but definitely for me, winning the Miss Universe title has been probably one of the most life changing accomplishments in my life. Uh, it has definitely opened up so many doors for me as well in Australian media where I'm actually able to talk about issues that are important to me. I didn't realise how much of an impact my winning would have on the you know cultural diversity in Australia, all that conversation. I've had so many messages from mothers of Eurasian children uh, or you know young people themselves who are Eurasian who have reached out to me and said thank you for you know, talking about the issues that you faced growing up here because I can completely relate and um, I just hope that I can keep on sharing those experiences and make people feel like they're not alone and that it's completely normal <laughs> and hopefully the more we talk about it those sort of um, issues will diminish. Thailand. I hope you and Katriana will be roommates. What can you say about her? I hope we're roommates too. Um, yeah, I think that she's got that Aussie kind of personality, so hopefully she'll be, you know, fun, easygoing. Um, I'm not really a stress head, so I hope that I'm ruined with someone who's not a stress head either. Um, You're so gorgeous and brainy. Mm, you should tell that to my dad because <laughs> I think that my dad ducks his school and so I had very big shoes to fill and I didn't quite <laughs> fill them. Um, so you tell him that, that I'm brainy. I think he'd like to hear that. Why Australian immigration so strict? <laughs> they remove all the foods in my bags. We are quite strict with our immigration here. I think we have a very delicate sort of ecosystem. And once again, because most of our, you know, economy is propped up by, you know, our, you know, production of food and crops that we can't let so many things in that it could be, you know, even the tiniest, you know, piece of fruit could be carrying some sort of disease or insect and that could kill millions and millions of crops and um, that's why they're so strict here. Also we're an island so we don't have anyone to help us on any other, you know, around us to help us if we're in need. Coming from a Chinese Asian descent, have you experienced bullying or racism during your childhood years? If yes, how did you overcome them? Uh, yeah, so I touched on this the other day when I did a little Q&A on my Instagram, but I have experienced racism by watching my father a lot more than, you know, it being directed at me, per se. Um, I know my dad coming to Australia when he was just a little boy, he was definitely singled out and 
that affected me growing up because I used to see how people would treat him. Um, he always you know, got that sort of stereotype of a Chinese person thrown upon him, even though he felt so Australian on the inside. He looked Chinese on the outside and people would just typecast him. Um, for me, growing up in a predominantly white area, I was always everybody's token Asian friend. And not that they, I don't think anyone ever meant to make me feel other or like I was on the outside, but I just think little comments like that, people didn't think were racism, but it actually is. Um, I remember a silly story, but I, there was actually another Francesca at my school. And the way that boys or people would distinguish us would be the hot Francesca and the Asian Francesca. And that's something so silly that most people would just think, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. But that really affected me because I used to always just think people only ever saw the Asian side of me. And I used to always say, hang on a second, I'm only half Chinese. Um, and why do they say it as if it's a bad thing? Um, so that's why I think I struggled with accepting my Asian heritage a lot growing up. Um, but now, yeah, I'm... I completely love that, you know, part of me and it means that I get to be part of two cultures, not just one. Do I speak Chinese? No, I don't, which is so unfortunate. Um, the reason for that is when my father came to Australia, it was during the White Australia policy um, and that was all about assimilating immigrants to Australia. Now. His parents spoke Chinese, but they wanted their children to fit in so badly in Australia that they refused to speak Chinese to the kids. So my dad, being full Chinese, an immigrant, cannot speak his mother tongue, which to anyone that's coming to Australia now is completely shocking because in schools these days they're teaching children Chinese. Um, it was just a really bad time for him to come in a way because he kind of had to leave his own heritage, you know, back in his mother country. Although I am starting Chinese lessons with my dad now. Um, I just think it's something that I definitely want to, I want to feel more part of the culture. Um, and I think a really good way of doing that is to learn some Chinese. Oh, I don't know which countries my attraction will be. <laughs> Why you're so pretty? <laughs> you have to talk to my parents about that one. That had nothing to do with me. Hi, Peru. I've been to Peru actually. It is beautiful. I went to Machu Picchu um, and it was stunning. What is the essence of having pageants like Miss Universe and how it affects humanity? I think actually like having a beauty pageant is really important because I think that it's a chance to let women, especially you know this Miss Universe, let women you know take center stage and put forward their advocacies. Now it's not often that beautiful women, you know, and it's not often that people associate beautiful women with intelligence, which is completely wrong. Um, but Miss Universe definitely gives, you know, that platform for beautiful people um, to show how intelligent they are. And it doesn't just, you know, if you're beautiful, it doesn't mean that you're going to be dumb. Um, so I think that's, it's an amazing platform. I think that uh, also it's great to have a competition like this because it brings together so many different countries. And it shows how the world is actually coming together um, and, you know, working together. And I think you can see it's always a really telling moment when the winner is crowned and all of the other girls always get behind that winner and support her. And they never seem like they're upset. You know, they're just happy for that girl. And I think that's a really good indication about how this is a really amazing platform for women to come and support other women. What can you say about the bias and garbage Miss Grant International pageant? 
Look, I haven't actually really followed the Miss Grand pageant, international pageant. Um, so I wouldn't even know where to start on that. Am I excited to come to Thailand? I am so excited to come to Thailand. I'm also very excited because it's only a nine hour flight for me, which may sound extremely long for anyone that's not from Australia. But if you're from Australia, you have to understand that we are very far away from everything and everyone. So sometimes to even get fly out of our country, you have to fly for about seven hours. So nine hours to me is a breeze. How has your family supported you in your journey as the reigning Miss Universe Australia? So I think it was a massive shock to my parents, um, but they are extremely proud. My father is over the moon and I think he gets a bit emotional about it sometimes because for him, he wishes that his parents, my Gungu and Popo, were here to see it because he just thinks, God, I wish that they knew that when they had to leave China and they brought their whole family here and they didn't speak the language and they had to start new, who would have thought that their granddaughter could become, you know, the next face to represent Australia? So I think he's very proud um, and very, very happy about this direction that Australia is moving in. What serves you better in life, knowledge or experience? Why? I think experience. Um, knowledge is very important, but sometimes someone can, t you know, I'm sure lots of you will know, your mother or father could tell you to do something and you'll go against their, you know, directions and you learn the hard way. Sometimes I think you have to experience certain things to understand for yourself. You can, you know, learn so much at school and you could have so much like book, you know, book smarts and knowledge. But unless you've actually experienced something, I don't think you can actually grasp the entirety of it. Um, for me, traveling is, has opened my eyes to so many things. And, you know, I did geography at school and I learned about different cultures and different countries. But until you are actually in that country and experiencing firsthand, you know, how those people live or what happens in those society, that society, you don't fully understand, you know, those cultures. So I've learnt so much from travelling and I've been very lucky. My family have always thought travel is number one and um, I've been to many, many different countries and cities and I think I've learned a lot that way. Do I have a departure date going to Thailand? I am leaving on the 28th of November and I arrive in Thailand at 1.40am. Caroline, let's say your roomie is a total racist and even made your co-candidates cry in any events. How will you handle her to stop such misbehaviour? I can't even imagine that anybody that is going to be in this competition is going to be a racist. I think that to get this far, all of the girls would have had to demonstrate, you know, how open-minded they are. So I can't imagine that happening. However, as I said earlier, I would say it how it is and if I did see somebody acting that way, I would have to call them out on it and um, sit them down and have a good chat about it. I think most of the time racism comes from ignorance. So at the end of the day, somebody can be taught and um, I think if you open their eyes to you know, diversity and all that sort of thing that, um, you know, they can actually change. Shout out for Manny Pasquale. <laughs> Why is the Miss Universe Australian pageant so cheap looking and not aired? I don't know about past years, but definitely with my management group, they have, my directors, Troy and Soph, took over about three, three, this is their third year running the Miss Australia pageant, and they have definitely amped it up. Um, we have a full, you know, production crew that comes with us on all of our, you know, trips to Bali and to Melbourne, 
um, they do an amazing job and we actually did air the TV show last week and it was incredible and that was called The Road to Miss Universe. Um, I'm sure you can still watch it, it's on Channel 9, so find the app and watch it and I'll prove you wrong, it's pretty amazing. Hello Miss, can I have a shout out and kindly answer this? How can I stop comparing myself to others? I am 16 by the way. James, I can't tell you how to stop comparing yourself to other people. I think that's something that you're going to have to learn to do yourself. However, I can give you, you know, a few reasons why you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anybody else. Um, I spent a lot of my years comparing myself and it only ever made me feel inadequate. Um, I never really saw the good qualities that I had because I was constantly, you know, looking at others and thinking, wishing I had that, wishing I had that, I wish I had blue eyes, I wish I had blonde hair, I wish I had bigger boobs or, you know, a smaller waist. Um, at the end of the day, all that negativity is only going to eat away at yourself. So now I have learnt to wake up in the morning, look at myself in the mirror and give myself some affirmations like, you're great or you are happy and healthy and you have an amazing you know family and support network um, and I've actually found that's really helped me hope that can help you too James and just don't compare yourself <laughs> I'm sure you are an amazing person on your own right in your own right sorry grammar not so good do you consider yourself privileged I Definitely do. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think growing up in Australia, I have been incredibly privileged. Um, I have always had a beautiful backyard to run around in. I've went to a great school. Um, you know, I've never had to face a lot of the hardships that I know a lot of other people have. Um, I've had a family that have always supported me and always told me to go for whatever, whatever you know dreams I want to go for. I've been able to go to university. Um, I've been, yeah, I think I am privileged in that respect, but I think that that has also taught me how to sort of, you know, it's taught, taught me a lot of really amazing values and hopefully that shows. Hopefully kind of, I don't act privileged, but I don't know, that's up to you guys. What's a better gift for you, perfumes or chocolate? Well, at the moment, please nobody give me chocolates um, and perfume so I can smell beautiful for everybody. Uh, but I do have a bit of a sweet tooth and I do love chocolate. Although I think my favorite chocolate is white chocolate, which isn't actually chocolate at all. Mm. If you could choose only one true love or Miss Universe crown, why? As much as I want that Miss Universe crown, I'm going to have to go with true love. I don't think that I would ever feel, you know, even if I, let's say I chose the crown, who would I have to celebrate that with if I didn't have true love? Um, I think that true love can make you the best version of yourself, um, someone that truly loves you and that you truly love will always encourage you to be the best version of yourself and um, I'm always striving to be better, so true love. Thank you Kevin, God bless you too. Can you give us a hint of your national costume? Uh, oh, I'm not really sure I'm allowed to do that but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say one thing. Oh, I don't know if I should. I might get in trouble. Um, I've got a beautiful designer from Perth who's designing it, and she's actually Eurasian herself, which is really nice. Some, you know, a nice little touch there. Um, young up and coming designer. It's going to have color in it. Um, I'm just going to say this, it's not a structural building, so last year we had the Opera House, so it's not going to be something like that. Oh, 
Oh, good morning from upstate New York. Other side of the world. What color is your evening gown dress? I'm not gonna say, but I will actually reveal my dress before I go overseas. Um, yeah. Can I sing a song? No, I think I'm tone deaf. So I cannot sing, and I, but I, I do sing. I'm not good at it, but I will. When I'm in the shower, in the car, at the clubs, anywhere and everywhere, I will sing. Um, and I'm sorry to anyone that's around me that has to hear that. Uh, actually, what I do though, I do love doing is dancing. So I have danced for my entire life. I did ballet for about 14 years, and then I did jazz, hip hop, tap. Um, so I have a rhythm, I think. Also, my mum used to tell me, but definitely no amazing vocal cords. In your opinion, what do you think men can learn from women? Well, I'm only going to take, you know, what I've learned from my own experiences, but I think that men... I think every man is different, so I don't think you can lump them in one group, but definitely the men in my life, what I've taught them is... Uh, they, so I taught them a sense of like softness and how to be more empathetic towards other people. Sometimes the men in my life can see things as rather black or white and my mum and I will sit down with my brother, my, my partner, my dad and kind of show them you know, a woman's intuition where you say, okay, it's not quite black or white, there's a bit of a grey area in the middle and you have to understand where they're coming from and I think women have an amazing sense of being empathetic and understanding somebody else's position. Um, and so I think that's what women, well, that's what I have taught men around me. Uh -uh, just going to... All right, guys, it's been almost an hour, so I'm gonna take, I think, let's do two more questions. Because you know what, I haven't had any dinner and I am starving. As I said, I love food, <laughs> so I'm gonna need to eat soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fade away. Tony, I can see Jacinta Campbell aura in you, who was Miss Universe Australia 2010 and won second runner-up in Miss Universe, sorry. Whose Australian beauty queen do you most admire? Thank you, Tony. That's a massive compliment to me because she's stunning. Um, I actually, I admire all of them. As I said, when I was growing up, I used to look up to all of those girls um, and want to emulate what they did and kind of I also admire what they've done since the pageant you know they've all gone on to have amazing successful careers however I look at Rachel Finch as a massive massive inspiration for me I think that she just comes across as a really down-to-earth humble woman um, She's got, you know, looks like she's got a beautiful family and she takes a lot of pride in her health and fitness. She's become a successful businesswoman um, and she's also an amazing spokesperson. So I think she was an amazing Miss Universe Australia. But um, I have actually met a few of the others and all of them are as lovely as they seemed, you know, on the screens to anyone else that was watching at home. Please post your dancing on your Instagram. <laughs> but it's daggy dancing now. I love my 80s pop music and yeah, it's almost like a lot of the time when I'm working out, I do like aerobic fitness in my own little dance area downstairs in my house. Um, and it's, it's not beautiful, but if we are overseas in Thailand and there's a bit of a dance party, I will honestly be the first person on that dance floor Daggy dancing, and I do not care what anybody else thinks. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to do another one more question. Alexi, how do you, what do you see yourself in five, oh, how do you see yourself in five years from now? Well, um, 
Five years from now, gosh, only five years ago I left school and I definitely didn't see myself here. So I think things are always changing depending on, you know, what, ex you know, what comes up. But for me, I would love to establish a career in the media industry. Um, for me, the media industry is exciting, it's intoxicating, um, it gives me jitters. I get nervous every time I have to speak publicly. Like even right now, before this live, I was very nervous. Um, but I also want to be a really strong role model for women and for any man. And I want to show cultural diversity in the media industry in Australia because we still have a predominantly very Western sort of media industry. Um, so I'd love to be, you know, also a changing face in that industry. Uh, I'd also like to continue on my advocacy towards mental health. Uh, and mainly I want to be happy and healthy. And um, that's it from me, guys. So thank you all so much for listening. Thank you so much for all your questions. I'm sorry I didn't get through all of them. Uh, and I'm sorry for the awkward bit at the beginning where I was just staring at you all and not really saying anything because I have no idea how this works. But hopefully next time, if I do it, I'll get it right. Um, I just want to finish on a little message to anybody out there. I just want to say don't shy away from your differences. Embrace them because your differences are what makes you unique and what make you you. And at the end of the day, you can't, um, you can't change who you are. Uh, so you should you know, try and embrace everything that you've been given because the most attractive thing about somebody is if they're confident in who they are. And that's it from me. If you want to see more of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, you can always follow my Instagram, um, and that is Francesca Hung. Pretty simple. All right, guys. Bye to everyone around the world, uh, especially Thailand and the Philippines. There were a lot of you, so thank you so much.